Hi, my name is Josie Baker and I'm a junior at St. Olaf College. This is my final project for Physics 374 Classical Mechanics. I will be talking to you about multiple spring and mass systems. First, we will go over the test case with two masses and three springs in its normal modes. Then, I will show you how to utilize Mathematica to find the normal modes of more complicated spring and mass systems. The normal modes of this system are at angular frequencies square root of k over m and square root of 3k over m. This is as long as all the spring constants are the same. There is another set of normal modes when we change the spring constant in the middle. These are at angular frequencies square root of k over m just the same as before, but our second angular frequency is square root of k plus 2k2 over m. Again, this is when k2 is different than k1 and k3. The normal modes of this case are very well known and can be found anywhere online. Now let's look at the equations of motion for this system. Our first equation of motion starts with k2 times the position of mass 2 minus the position of mass 1. Our second term is negative since it's a force in the opposite direction. k1 times the position of the first mass minus 0 since the wall on the left is not moving. This is set equal to the mass of mass 1 times the acceleration of mass 1. Our second equation of motion is k3 times 3, which accounts for the non-moving wall on the right, minus the position of mass 2. Our second term will again be negative, since it's a force in the opposite direction. This is k2 times the position of the second mass minus the position of mass 1. This is set equal to the mass of mass 2 times the acceleration of mass 2. Here is a visual for our test case. I programmed the position of the first mass to be shifted slightly to the right of x1 so that the motion begins with no external forces. We can see from the graph that both masses move in the same way, but at two different frequencies. This is true for however many masses are in the system. So when we utilize Mathematica and take the power spectrum, we can do so with respect to our first mass and it will represent the natural modes for all masses in the system. We can easily calculate the normal modes of this system by hand. When we set k equal to 1 and m equal to 1, we get frequencies of 1 and approximately 1.7. But why do it by hand when you have Mathematica to do it for you? If we input the equations of motion we wrote out earlier in simple initial conditions, we can have Mathematica plot the position versus time graph for mass 1, like you see here. And we can then take the Fourier of the positions and plot the power spectrum, which is amplitude squared versus our angular frequency omega. We can see the normal modes of this system on the power spectrum with large spikes at 1 and 1.7 like we found earlier. Now let's take a look at a system with four masses and five springs. Our first two equations of motion will be the same as our two mass and three spring system, but the constant three that accounted for the non-moving wall on the right is replaced with the position of our new moving mass three. Our third equation of motion follows the same rules as the second. And then our fourth equation of motion will now take into account the non-moving wall at x equal to 5. We can now input these equations of motion into Mathematica. Let's set k equal to 1 and the mass is equal to 1 as well. We can then get our position versus time graph and take the Fourier of the positions to get the power spectrum, just like we did for our test case. Now we see four spikes, just like we anticipated, since there are four masses. There are four normal modes at approximately 0.7, 1.2, 1.7, and 1.9, but the spikes are uneven. These uneven spikes are expected, since the normal modes of each spring and mass system are just the linear combinations of the frequencies of the system. So, with different spring constants, we see different sizes of spikes at different frequencies, like on this power spectrum for the same system, but with k equal to 4 instead of 1. We get normal modes at approximately 1.2, 2.4, 3.3, and 3.8. There will always be four spikes at the normal modes of the system if there are four masses, unless the linear combination of one of the normal modes comes out to be zero. Then there would only be three spikes. Here is an example of the power spectrum for an eight mass and nine spring system. We see that one normal mode is missing from the power spectrum. This is in result of the linear combination of the normal mode being zero and the linear combination of frequencies 3.7 and 5.3 is almost zero as well. We can barely see the spikes.
Instead of dealing with large matrices to find the normal modes of complicated spring and mass systems, like many papers online do, you can see that it's much easier and more intuitive to utilize Mathematica. The only thing you have to do is write out the equations of motion for your system. As I continue on with this project, I hope to explore the omega versus mode number graphs of complicated spring and mass systems. You can see a correlation between the frequency and the mode number when all the spring constants are the same, as seen here. However, when you alternate the spring constants between the masses, you see gaps or jumps in the frequencies, like on this graph. With more time, I would like to investigate the cause of these jumps. Thanks for watching my Physics 374 Classical Mechanics final project. Special thanks to Dr. Amy Cullen for coaching me through the project and Annabelle Kapelke for helping me film. I hope you enjoyed learning about an easier and more fun way to find the normal modes of spring and mass systems.